Can a Canadian idea to grow tourism in rural communities succeed in the villages of Vietnam? This week, A-Channel reporter Shachi Curl has been bringing you special reports from Southeast Asia. Last month, Shachi traveled to Cambodia and Vietnam on a fellowship from the Jack Webster Foundation and the Canadian International Development Agency. Last night, she profiled the challenges that a booming Vietnamese economy are bringing to the country's rural regions. Tonight, she takes us to the village of Taffin, where Vancouver Islanders worked with villagers to develop sustainable tourism in a region that's suddenly very popular. Shachi joins us now with more. Shachi? Well, Eric, from sleepy backwater to bed and breakfast must see. That's the transformation the Sapa region of Vietnam has been experiencing in the last 10 years. But as you're about to see, the prosperity that comes with growth doesn't always touch everyone equally. The views, quite simply, are spectacular. These are the mountain ranges of Sapa, Vietnam, peaks usually cloaked in cloud and mystery. Back in the 1920s, this region was developed as a hill station, a place for French colonial soldiers to come and beat the heat. But lately, it's been tourists that are trekking through these parts, bringing with them plenty of cash and sometimes problems. The cash is a welcome shot in the arm to what was little more than a sleepy backwater 15 years ago. The problem is that not everyone's getting the same benefit. Where Vietnamese vendors can afford to pay rent for their stalls and shops, the region's many tribal people cannot. Instead, they are forced to stalk, pursue and sometimes chase their customers on foot. But this chaos is worth the profit. Their delicate embroideries are a financial lifeline. These intricate designs sewn by hand will fetch market prices 100 times higher than what families might otherwise earn. No wonder the lure to sell in town is so strong. But now, neighboring Tafin village, home to the Red Zhao tribe, is trying to maximize its profit potential with a concept called community-based tourism. So that they can welcome the tourists directly. Because now the real situation is that all the tourists, they don't know where to contact with the local people. The villagers are working on this with the Canadian International Development Agency, which is how a Canadian, a Vancouver Islander named Maggie O'Sullivan, got involved. O'Sullivan is the Dean of International Education at North Island College. She spent time in Taffin helping set up a community-based tourism project. Tourism, as I said before, was encroaching on their community, and they were trying to find ways to take advantage of that. One of those ways is by establishing homestays in the village. <laughs> Yesterday, you met Li Mei Pham. Just 18, she runs her own homestay. I am proud of my family. It's a success. But can a transplanted idea successfully translate on the other side of the world? After all, this is where the buffalo really do roam and where they leave little presents in the middle of the road. Go inside and it's like going back in time. Central heating consists of an open pit fire, flames also doubling in the gourmet kitchen. As for the main course, well at least its last moments were happy. Then there's what you face when nature calls. Once little more than a hole in the ground, there's been progress on that front. There were no toilets in the past. So now we, uh, we have at least 15 toilets in the village. And while the mountains are an irresistible lure for trekkers, there's not exactly loads to do in the village, except drink lots of tea and play a local version of chess. David. We welcome tourists to Tafin. We want them to come and share our culture. Villagers are saying all the right things, but can they truly expect to gain a foothold in the hospitality trade? Is the goal even realistic? I think the last thing that we would want to do is to make every um, homestay a Hilton hotel. And stopping time may actually be impossible.
As proud of her lodgings as Li Mei Pham may be, she's also keeping an eye on the bottom line. I still want to sell my goods downtown. Why wouldn't I? There's good money in it. As they perform songs and dances once reserved for ceremonies and community gatherings, it's hard to see what the future holds for Tafin. Ten years from now, how many children will be attending the village school? How many will be running their own homestays? And how many will choose to seek their fortunes in Sapa Market? Perhaps the answers lie somewhere in that ebbing, rolling fog. Now, Eric, the project actually wraps up later this year, so we'll have to find out whether it is deemed a success or not. Now, we have a double feature tonight as we wrap things up at the end of this week. Here's a look at how my first day started on this trip. When you're a reporter on the beat, there's a difference between getting stuck on a story and just getting stuck. The day had started well enough, but here we were, my translator in his bare feet to save his shoes, our truck four feet in the mud, going nowhere. That is, until some loggers drove by. Now, they were busy enough hauling stumps, but they did have chains and a winch, and that was good enough to get us the heck out of there. Now, it is custom, no matter where one is, to properly thank one's rescuers. But this day, not even that goes smoothly. You need some. I have some if you need some. What else can you do but laugh? This day was done. The story would have to wait until tomorrow. And I had learned road reporting lesson number one. When you head out, make sure the gods of journalism are on your side. And they were for the rest of the trip, Eric. And I understand you want to thank a few people, Shachi? Yes, thank you for the reminder, Eric. That's very kind of you. Where would I be without thanking uh, Rob Kettner, who cut and produced this series for me, as well as Scott Ashton, who put in many hours and a lot of work in our graphics department. Uh, and also, I have to say a thank you to all our ENG camera operators, all the camera guys for their support and teaching and tutelage on the finer parts of shooting before I went. And for those who don't know, Shachi shot all of that herself using the PD-150 camera, and you did a great job, and I enjoyed your series immensely. Thank you, Shachi. Thanks, Eric. Hey, Channel Shachi Kuro reporting tonight.